Chapter Twenty Six of Bob's A Girl Detective. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Bob's A Girl Detective by Grace May North. Chapter Twenty Six A Happy Reunion. Dick Delaney was leaning over the railing of the big liner that was to take him away from the country that was home to him and from the girl he loved, whose happiness meant more to him than did his own. But as he looked out over the choppy waters of the bay and toward the broad Atlantic, he could see ahead of him nothing but years of loneliness. Then it was that he heard a voice that was eagerly, tremulously calling his name. He whirled and beheld Roberta back of him, her hands outstretched. There were tears in her eyes as she said, Dick, why did you do it? Why did you plan going away without saying goodbye? Even if you have changed your mind, even if you don't care for me any more, it isn't like you to just run away. Dick's face, troubled at first, was radiant when the full meaning of the words reached his consciousness. Bob's, he said. Why, Bobita, I thought you didn't care. That is, I thought maybe you loved Ralph, and so, and so you were going away to let me have someone else? You dear old stupid. To think that I so nearly lost you just because I was so very sure that you loved me, that I could never lose you, and so I didn't write about it. These two were holding each other's hands and looking deep into each other's eyes, entirely oblivious of their surroundings. Roberta continued, Dicky boy, I've had my lesson, and when we are married, every day the first thing instead of good morning, I am going to say I love you, which, after all, will mean the same thing. Married? Bobs! When are we to be married? The girl laughed at the lad's eagerness, but as many passengers were appearing on deck, she replied, demurely some time of course and live happily ever after it was hard for dick not to shout but instead he said come along dear and i'll cancel my passage and then i'll go home with you and tell you what all this means to me i can't very well hear then as he glanced about he inquired how did you get here bobs did you come alone no ralph brought me her conscience rebuked her for she had completely forgotten the existence of her other friend. He was hurt as I was because you were going away without seeing him, she told Dick. Poor old Ralph was all he said. I certainly am sorry for him, but I suppose it can't be helped. Sorry for Ralph? Why? Roberta's expression of surprised inquiry was so frank that the lad knew his pal had never spoken of his love. Dick was even more puzzled when, upon reaching the dock, he saw his friend Ralph leap toward them with hands outstretched. Joyfully he exclaimed, Great! I know by your radiant faces that you've made up. I congratulate you both. I certainly am glad that we made it on time. Then, after a hearty handshaking, What put the wild notion of flight into your head, old man? You can't get rid of us that easy, can he, Bobs? My detective partner here has been telling me that she has been engaged to you ever since she wore pinafores. Or was it a little later? Roberta laughed. I believe I had on a writing habit that day, didn't I, Dick? Ralph turned away after a fleeting glance at the girl's face as it was uplifted to his roommate. He had not dreamed that she could be as beautiful as that expression of love had made her. Dick was replying. Oh, it doesn't matter much when it happened, dear. The big thing is that it did happen at all. Then, when they were in the big green car, the front seat was wide enough to hold all three of them, Dick began to ask questions. How is Gwen now? was the first of them. He was pleased to hear that the girl but a year Roberta senior was better and visiting his sister Phyllis. Then it was that Bob's thought of something. Why, Ralph, she said. You never did have an opportunity to meet my beautiful sister Gwendolyn, did you? 
she hasn't been strong enough to visit with strangers and now she has gone away for a whole month dick smiled as he said to the driver bobs is giving herself a compliment when she calls gwendolyn beautiful for the family resemblance between the two girls is very striking roberta laughed i should say that it must be dick did i ever write you about the time a stage manager thought that i was gwen and i actually had to do a song and dance i laugh every time i think of it gloria said afterwards that it was a natural mistake for though i am not as civ like as my sister we do look very much the same ralph smiled but he made no response his thought was commenting as though any one could be like you bobs it was noon when the pensinger mansion was reached and roberta told the lads that she wasn't going to ask them in just then as she had to do some writing for mr jewett that must be delivered that afternoon but she invited them both to supper if they weren't afraid to eat her cooking dick said he certainly would reappear as soon as she would permit him to come but ralph had an engagement with his dad as that was not unusual bobs did not think that this time it was an excuse to remain away as indeed it was roberta turned at the house door to wave to the lads in the car that was starting away vaguely she wondered what they would talk about how little she knew of the aching heart that one of them was so bravely trying to hide end of chapter twenty six recording by sharon kilmer rio medina texas